mean, that's almost, you know, oh gosh. So like, do you budget? Do you uh, buy last year's model? Do you um, buy used? Do you buy The Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Flying It. Here we go. 50 mile full review. We made it just like that. I started running in the shoe. What was the what day was the Denver Cyclone? Was that four days ago? Roughly. So I took this out for I think four runs, maybe five, because I think I doubled. Anyway, I did a 21 mile long run to test it out over the long run distance. Two easy runs, including today. And then yesterday was a 13 mile tempo run at 555 a mile for this yes let's do the dance neutral road running shoe it's definitely dancing hundred percent although they have incorporated a little stability feature here in the heel which we will come back to in a minute so oh man i yeah I, I have to just reinforce i don't despise nike everybody for everyone that was a little concerned after the infinity and yes after the I'm um, sorry. Yeah, the Infinity, where I tore the upper and then the Vimero 15, which made my feet go numb about, you know, five, five or six days ago. I'm not going to take that shoe to 50 miles. I'm beholden to no one. It does not matter what the logo is on the side of the shoe. It doesn't matter if it's the swoosh. Doesn't matter if it's the three stripes. Doesn't matter if it's the bird from Hoka. Doesn't matter. All that matters is the individual performance for each shoe. And that's why I took this guy to 50 miles in less, it was at four days, I think, okay? So we've arrived and let's just say I'm very, very excited. All right, let's drop, uh, dr drop into it, dive into it. Drop is nine millimeters from heel to toe. The Nike.com website is saying officially 36.6 in the heel and 27.6 in the forefoot for that high to maximalist stack height category, 100%. For the weight, women's size eight, men's size nine, there it is on your screen. And let's put it on the scale in my size over here. We're looking at, oh boy, hold on, wrong, wrong mode, 262 grams or 9.2 ounces in my size. So I'm giving it a seven out of 10 and we'll come back to the weight here in a minute. For that upper, we're looking at flying it upper and with some breathability zones built in. I can see it here. It's just more translucent on the uh, inside of the foot here. What they're saying is, you know, Nike's been analyzing how human feet uh, heat up when they start running, like different locations. So they're trying to create flying it material that is more breathable in certain areas uh, on, on the upper. Okay, so I can see it here right on the inside of the foot is one, probably a little bit over here on the top of the midfoot as well. So anyway, overall lockdown, unbelievable. Nine out of 10 for the lockdown, fully gusseted tongue. Very, I, they nailed the tongue. It's not tearing, D just kidding. They nailed the tongue. And yes, it did not tear on me, not at all. I could yank on this thing all day and it's not gonna tear on me. Oh man, we, 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 won't go, we won't go down that path again, everyone. It's an amazing, amazing lockdown. A uh, reinforced eyelet chain, nailed it. Uh, what else, what else? Oh yeah, let's talk about the heel counter. Okay, it's actually got some pretty good rigidity built into it. I am gonna say the overall score for the upper is not nearly as high as the lockdown because in my humble opinion, I think they overbuilt the heel collar by a lot. And maybe they're thinking that the next iteration, they wanna drop it down by 0.2 ounces or 0.3 ounces, you know, trend in the lightweight direction. And so therefore they will remove some weight from the upper in 2022. And I do predict this is gonna be a very popular shoe moving forward in the Nike running shoe lineup. And so I do think that they overbuilt the collar by a lot. Um, also, they have this plastic heel clip, also what looks basically like a, um, a horseshoe. It wraps around your heel to create a little more stability. If you get this shoe, 
and you could give me a report on what you are feeling through this heel clip. I personally don't think it adds that much stability through the heel. If you feel it though, definitely let me know. I just, I'm not feeling it. So I don't think this heel clip personally is 100% necessary, but who knows? Maybe folks out there will enjoy that. Moving on to the midsole. Finally, Nike has put into a trainer shoe full Zoom X midsole foam and a lot of it with no plate inside, no React to share. Um, it's just a bed of Zoom X on under your feet. The ride and energy is unbelievable. Nine out of 10 for the ride and energy return. It's simply the bounciest ride I think I've ever had. I'm not, I'm not joking when I say it. Like it is a bouncy, bouncy energy return type of ride. And we'll come back to how I will use this shoe here in a minute. Overall score for the uh, upper, or sorry, for the midsole, we're going with eight out of 10. And again, I'll come back to one of the potential drawbacks for the durability prediction, which is why the overall score for the midsole is not quite as high as that ride and energy return. For the outsole, we've got full waffle uh, rubber, a waffle pattern rubber on the outsole there. We're gonna go 7.5 out of 10. I wish it could be a little higher, but I wish, you know, I, uh, they're, they're trying to boost the durability of that Zoom X by covering it up completely with that waffle pattern. And it's fine, you know me, if they could just cut off a little bit. And again, maybe in 2022, they will remove some of this rubber on the outsole in order to drop the weight down just a little bit. So there you go, seven and a half for the outsole. It is gonna definitely, I mean, I took it out in the snow and the ice and I never really felt like I was not getting decent grip out there in some pretty, you know, wild conditions in downtown Denver. For the fit, eight and a half out of 10, unbelievable. Just, oh, I went true to size. You should know that. I would go true to size if I were you. No issues. I felt like plenty of room for my toes to spread out just a little bit at the in the toe box. Uh, the midfoot was fine and the heel was fine. I mean, just, yeah, no issues with fit at all. Yeah, eight and a half out of 10 for the fit and another great score for the comfort. Oh man, I mean, the, the upper is comfortable. You know what's the most comfortable? It's the tongue. They nailed it. It's just a really, really nice tongue. Uh, even the material that lays on top of your foot, like I'm feeling it right there. Yeah, I'm not saying I would run bare, like with, sorry, sockless, yeah, barefoot uh, in the shoe, but if I had to, I would consider it. Like it just is a really nice material here on the inside of the tongue. And of course, that Zoom X is just unbelievably comfortable. Unbelievably comfortable. Okay, positive and drawback for the Invincible. Positive is the energy return. Okay, that's my that's my number. It's that's it. That's it's just it's just amazing. Um drawback, a couple drawbacks, and we'll get to another one in a second. First drawback, the shoelaces. They're too short. I can't double knot the shoelaces. Who else out there already owns the Invincible? Are you, and I do the runner's knot on all my shoes. And so the runner's knot, it does the shoe. <laughs> Nike, come on, Nike, come on, Nike, especially considering how much they're charging for this shoe. Let's make the shoelaces about two inches longer. I don't know what happened. Maybe I got a bad pair of shoelaces. So right now it's crazy. That's my major drawback. Um, durability prediction, going with 400 for that full benefit from the Zoom X. However, I think the shoe will go to five, 600, 700 if you really want it to, uh, because there is so much Zoom X packed in there. But to get that full bounce and energy return, I think it's gonna start to diminish. You know, I think it's gonna start to diminish or probably even around like 350 is my, is my guess. Of course, when people start picking it up and you take it past 400 miles, if you could post a picture on the Facebook group or somewhere on Twitter, that would be amazing. Let us all know how it is doing out there. So here we go. How will I use this shoe? Who is it best for? Um, I, I live in Denver. I live in an urban environment. I train high volume. I love to run. I love long runs. I need a little bit of reprieve from the pounding. Now, who is the shoe best for? I'm gonna say that uh, it felt better for heel striking versus forefoot. I'm more of a forefoot striker. If you're a heel striker, I think this is more in your category or midfoot. Um, if you love bounce, okay, if you love bounce, and if you're not afraid to be a little bit raised off the ground. I bet some people are gonna say that this, this shoe 
feels unstable underfoot. For me, that's not an issue because I'm more of a trail runner, so you always feel unstable in crazy rocky conditions that I run in. So I never really feel unstable in shoes, but I bet some people are gonna be, even though it's a wide landing, very wide landing through the forefoot, through the heel, but I bet people are gonna be uh, noticing that it just is so bouncy and so kind of neutral oriented that it's gonna feel slightly unstable under foot. So that's who it's best for. Heel striker, enjoys bounce, and soft ride and is not afraid to be off the ground just a little bit if you don't like if you like to feel ground contact low profile to the ground and united with the earth this is not for you okay just just putting it out there right now oh boy here we go price point price point price point 180 dollars nike that's insane tweener alert though tweener tweener major major this shoe felt amazing my last mile yesterday was 530 it was a 530 mile okay nine ounce shoe 530 mile was fine like it was beyond fine like I felt like I was I was working of course but it didn't feel like I had to dig for 530 a mile and of course long run amazing easy day because it's so soft like the Clifton 7 I love the Clifton 7 for an easy day all right, I love uh, so because <laughs> it's soft underfoot. So I, <laughs> oh my goodness. Now my score, that's ridiculous. One hundred and eighty dollars is ridiculous. And when I two weeks ago, when I heard the price of this shoe, I almost passed out. I almost was like, that's ridiculous. But I'm gonna say that <laughs> the shoe would be amazing at one hundred and fifty. That is the sh that is the price point I would love to see the shoe at. One hundred and sixty would be acceptable. 180 is a little, it's its ridiculous. Uh, maybe they think because of the Zoom X that they can charge that. Now here's the deal. Aha, there, people are gonna pay it. They're just, it's that, it's special. This is, I, I hate to say it's a, it's a Nova Blast killer, but this thing, this, it's just ridiculous. This is a tweener. You guys, I'm a little, I'm a little like, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, this is gonna rock the running shoe marketplace in 2021 it just is it's going to be long run tempo it won't be threshold for me but i mean my threshold pace is 520 a mile 515 a mile and so this i, I was running 530 a mile just fine yesterday um and yes easy day because it's so soft underfoot now 180 that's ridiculous so four and a half out of ten I would have loved to given it a 3 out of 10 because that's such a ridiculous price. But I can't give it a 3 out of 10 or a 2.5 out of 10 because it can accomplish so, so much in your training regimen. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, Nike. Nike! So, other shoes to buy if you don't want to spend $180. Of course, the Nova Blast, the Bondi 7, um, the New Balance Fresh Foam More. But I'm just going to tell you right now, none of those shoes have as much bounce as this guy. The closest thus far is probably the Nova Blast. And oh, see, even like the Mach 4 from Hoka wouldn't be an easy day shoe for me. It could be a long run, but it's not an easy, it's just a little too firm for me for just a bop and a long day, an easy day. So it's, it's not accomplishing as many tasks in the running shoe rotation ridiculous it's 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 people are oh i'm sorry i'm sorry nike are you are you listening like come on come on let's let's do 155 let's compromise let's compromise a 155 there you go shoe quick specs on your screen soak it in one more time full review 50 score 7.65 out of 10 i'm gonna tell you right now anything over 7.5 is 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 solid so anything over eight is amazing like the uh the uh Saucony endorphin speed i think it was in the eights the mach 4 was in the eights the reason this is not in the eights is because of the price mm -hmm. that price that 4.5 just dropped it down so whoo that's how i feel uh pinch pennies start saving your money and yes it connects to the question of the day because i'm just genuinely curious what is your strategy for purchasing new running shoes? I mean, that's almost, you know, oh gosh. So like, do you budget? Do you 
uh, buy last year's model? Do you um, buy used? Do you buy used? Huh? Huh? What is your strategy for buying running shoes so that we can win as a consumer? I'll just say that, like, how do you win as a consumer in the running shoe game? Oh, such a kind of a big um, question that's a little abstract, but I am, I'm, I'm curious, and maybe you can get some ideas for your purchasing uh, strategy and habits moving forward down below in the comments. I bet some people have some pretty creative ways that they win in the purchasing arena, because again, uh, uh, but it's so fun. It's an amazing shoe, everyone. Okay. There we go. We'll toss it to, um, we'll toss it to the Nova Blast. We'll toss it to well, I, I maybe mean, a couple, sh a couple videos about the Nova Blast because that, that thus far, that's the shoe that's jumping out at me. That's the closest to the Invincible. Okay, right here, right here. Asics Nova Blast. Butter that bread. Onward and upward. Seek beauty. Work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.